what's going on guys car coming back at you with another magic the gathering video in today's video we dive into some more budget decks that i did come up with and in this one we're kind of going to go over each one briefly and kind of describe some of them some of these are decks that you may have seen before in previous standard meta in some way or another and some of them are also more newer budget style decks that you may have seen come up more recently and i think with the newer uh post ban uh, standard that we have now i think a lot of these decks are a little bit more playable just because the meta is not as crazy as i think it is it's a little bit more forgiven i think the games are a little bit slower sure you're gonna get your mono reds and things like that of course we're also gonna go over a mono red deck in today's video but uh the overall meta in general is a little bit more for forgiven for players maybe playing decks that aren't as strong when it comes to power wise just because of the recent changes with that being said guys let's dive into each one of these decks kind of briefly describe what each one does all the links for these decks will be down in the description below in case you want to import them yourself try them out in mtg arena or look at what you want to build towards uh each one each one kind of in their sideboard will also have uh, upgrade options as i don't have the exact amount of copies of cards that you want to add into the deck um with that being because depending on the deck uh, it, it really requires how many cards you want to work towards and also in the sideboard you're only limited to 15 cards so if i actually added the exact copies i think i wouldn't need to possibly add to the deck as you upgrade it i wouldn't be able to fit it in a 15 card sideboard with that being said let's dive into the first deck and let's talk about it all right so the first deck up is pretty pretty much a deck that you've probably seen since m21 has come out with the dobin's veto style deck but with this one we're going completely budget friendly as we're not really running any rares in the deck whatsoever and that is a you know orzov life gain budget style deck and it's just a simple basic lifestyle deck with this like maybe a couple modifications maybe since i posted one uh of these style decks and that being said we're just adding some new cards from the car rise which is the blood for chief's thirst which is a card that's a new like uh you know creature removal spell for one mana and in the late game you can always pay the four mana to remove a creature that's cost two or more so that's very good in a uh, diverse uh you know creature removal card as well as we also add in this guy cleave cleric just because it's a card that either becomes a creature that gains us life or it's a land in case we really need it desperately in the early game to you know get to round out our mana and this card itself is a one three for two mana and it gains two life which is very good against the more aggressive aggro decks that play smaller creatures that you know this thing can probably eat in a way uh essentially like whether it's a one one or even a two two it can e easily eat it just because of its three toughness uh other than that guys the deck itself is pretty straightforward what it's trying to do we are running a basis of 20 lands in the deck just because we do have the modal style land in the cleric uh but it's eight planes eight swamps and four scoured planes uh our life gain, life gain engines would be the all seeds life bounty we got the archfiend's vessel in the early game these are very good sources again that one one life each um, we also do run the Griffin Airy, so if we gain that three life in a given turn, by the end of our given turn, we get a 2-2 flyer. We got Hallow Priest to also get bigger and bigger as we gain more and more life. We have the Cleric, like I said, to also play a land and or gain life. Daxos, which is a very solid card because we gain life whenever creatures enter the battlefield, and we gain life whenever creatures die from the battlefield. And it gets tough, it gets bigger and bigger for the more devotional weight we have, so it becomes a pretty decent blocker in the late game. Call the Death Waller to kind of bring back some of the things from our graveyard to get back our Archfiend's Vessels, to get po possibly back our, our Owl Seeds, get back a Hollow Priest or something like that, depending on what the situation is. But these, this is a good card just to kind of get something back, give it Death Touch or something Menace to make it a little bit more aggressive, as well as the Indulgent Partic Patrician, which is the solid card from M21, as it being a 1 4 with Lifelink. And at the beginning of our end step, if we gain three or more life, our opponent then loses three life. So it's, a, it's definitely a good payoff card. And we've got Face Feathers to kind of, you know, slow down our opponent's bigger things. And we also gain four life out of it which then would trigger the griffin airy overall this is kind of like the little basic like life gain engine uh with that being said you're probably wondering where certain cards are uh in the sideboard we do have the cards that you're probably wondering we do have the speaker of the heavens you could probably swap out some of the little smaller drops just because you know overall uh with it being a life gain style deck this is a one one with vigilance and lifelink and if we get to 27 life you know you are gonna you are going to be able to start pumping out angel tokens helia uh son of the sun crowned is another good one here uh in the sense that whenever we gain life we get to put a plus one plus one counter on target creature or enchantment including helia itself or in the we tap two mana and give target creature life link until end of turn which is also very solid in the sense that some other things can start getting bigger and we gain a lot of life uh which is very good 
and then it's in here for the decent amount of devotion it has also a lot of our things are small so when we ever swing very big uh we can gain one life for each thing attacking which is then essentially turns on a bunch of things in our deck uh overall i would say if you are this is probably one of those cards because of the three devotion it's very hard to cast i would say this is something you probably only want to run like two of at most to draw it sometimes but it's not one of those cards you want to draw all the time just because of the high devotion uh nighthawk scavenger is a card that i I, I was playing around with that i actually found to be quite interesting for the deck just on the basis of it's a it's automatically a one three right out the, the gate if your opponent has nothing in their graveyard has flying has death touch has lifelink and then it gets bigger and bigger depending on what types of cards they have in their graveyard cards and graveyards have characters of their front face so i mean that's for the modal lands but you know you get bump it gets bigger for lands spells like instance sorceries and then creatures so this thing could get pretty pretty interesting and the fact that as lifelink death touch and flying i think makes it overall pretty good for a three mana and of course you got the veto which i would say is one of those cards you want to actually throw probably four copies of just because this is one of the cards that when you do play in the deck uh it essentially makes the deck even stronger just because now our opponent's taking damage whenever we gain life which a lot of things like i said in the deck gain us life and then in the end we can always just tap the big five swing in very heavily give everything lifelink regardless of if they block or not uh they are going to lose life we're going to gain life and then they're going to lose life for the amount of life we gained so essentially this is like the big finisher but overall this is a deck to just you know to kind of get you started in that orzhov life gain style if that's something you're looking out for and in the way you can always work into getting some of these rares i would suggest the veto is probably the first thing you want to get i do think if you do play with the starter decks and you have it unlocked i think the veto is one of those cards that are in one of the starter decks automatically so there is that some of these cards are older cards that you may not have if you're a newer player to the game but these are cards that are definitely in the more recent packs like linden's probably the oldest one because it's from throne uh, but heliads from you know some of these set uh, he adds like what ikoria i think i get this one confused with the other one but it's either ikoria or something this is uh uh right as a zendikar wow I, I completely blinked out and then m21 so i would say go for the veto first it's also from m21 and then kind of work your way backwards maybe get some speakers just for to replace some of our smaller drops and then maybe try to like get a couple pieces here in the middle but overall it's a pretty solid deck uh if you want to you know try it out see how it goes like i said the meta is a little bit different so hopefully it overall works better but let's move on to the next deck so this list here is a mono red uh raid bombardment style deck and if you don't know what raid bombardment is it's pretty much pretty much a card that if we swing with a creature that's i think power two or less it deals one damage to target player or planeswalker that creature is attacking so essentially whenever we swing it with our creatures we're going to automatically do one damage uh this is similar to uh deck that uh was around in the previous standard uh but this is a card that got added with the one starter deck uh in mtg arena i think there's a weird issue I, if you have issues with it just on a heads up if you have any issues with any of these cards that are marked with a i feel like somehow they're only legal in best of one but they're not legal in best of three uh i don't know if they ever, if that was a bug or if that's actually how it's supposed to be but if you're having issues just double check the deck when you import it into mtg arena because if it's not set to standard it may actually flag you with something else yeah see i guess these aren't legal in best of three but if you play best of one this deck will work in that manner but anyway uh with that being said the deck is pretty straightforward what it's trying to do we're just trying to play a bunch of little small creatures the most of the creatures cost one or two uh there are a lot of one ones or two ones or things like that so it's very like small ping your hit your opponent in the face damage uh focusing around just triggering this every time we attack with you know creatures of power two or less um which is essentially very good of course we play the annex here because whenever any of our things die we then get satyr tokens in the process so we're just replacing anything that possibly dies uh a trick here that you can actually do is if you have an annex out and you have a second one in your hand you can essentially play the second annex uh legend rule goes into effect but the devotion adds up for both of them so both of them count as four and then this actually will poop out you know essentially four satyr tokens uh because the power is four when the annex dies you get the you get the satyr tokens for both this annex and, and the other annex equal to the you know the devotion of four or higher so essentially free satyr tokens if that's something you're looking for just a side note that i don't know if it's one of those things that that everyone knows and if you're playing the second it's just a little tip to help you out making more more tokens uh, but overall like i said the deck is straightforward what's trying to do you know we claim the first one and maybe take our opponent's small creatures and just kind of you know use them against their themselves uh fireblade charger which is a new card for zendikar rise it's a one one that if it dies it deals uh, damage equal to its power to any target so it automatically at least does one um and if it has and if it's equipped it has haste but really we're not playing any equipment here because we really don't want to make any other things stronger than two so you know at least it's like it has an ability that when it dies it does something to your opponent uh raging goblins is a one one for one with haste 
uh like i said it's part of that starter set so you can only play in a best of one we got some shock from some spot removal and or damage to the face spike field hazard same thing got that spot removal for the one damage or also the land in case we really need it weaponized monsters is the thing that we can do is that when we start getting a low when we our opponent starts getting low we can start sacrificing our own creatures and throw them at our opponent's face to deal damage to them to hopefully finish them off also if we want to get uh, annex out of the way maybe and just deal that initial damage get a bunch of Seder tokens and then maybe swing on the following turn with the giant raid bombardment that's also a possibility ginger brute which is another one mana one one haster that we can make it unblockable and also we can sacrifice against some life if needed uh chandra's pyrolin is actually the one card that takes uh, advantage of the effect of the raid bombardment because whenever our source we control deals non combat damage to an opponent it gets plus one plus zero and gains double strike until end of turn so essentially this is the card that's going to be really hitting our opponent really really hard it's a card that has a built-in ember cleave and with the rainbow bombardment we have an instant way to trigger this every single time we attack um i think this stacks i i kind of messed around with it but i didn't really like pay attention to if it stacks when i did play this deck out as i was playing messing around with it um so not like you're gonna get quadruple strike or things like that but you you could additionally get additional plus one plus zero on this card and then add that with the double strike which makes it just that much better the only downfall is unlike ember cleave it does have trample so that's the only downfall to it but this also um as another thing the effect gets triggered at the start so when we swing in with everything then the rebound moment hits it does the x amount of damage depending on how many creatures are attacking and then we get the plus one plus zero and double strike afterwards so it's not going to go above the two uh essentially on us and you know cause issues in that way uh we got the forbidden friendship which creates some one ones for us which is a one one red dinosaur with haste and a one way human soldier token which helps us with our raid bombardment we got castle's fury just in case we want to throw sacrifice a creature we can throw it at our we throw that creature at our opponent's face uh essentially we can throw our annex at our opponent's face if we start getting if they start getting low and then getting some Seder tokens to replace um of course we got 18 lands but you know we also play the spike field hazards uh the, the lands you know it's a very you know budget friendly deck in the sense that nothing really costs more than three so you really shouldn't have to worry about too many things and it's costing too expensive like you should be able to play multiple things even if you have two three lands on the battlefield um and then for the sideboard there's just maybe a few cards you want to add because i think essentially what you want to do with this deck is kind of keep the cheap creatures and cheap power of the creatures and all, all we're really doing here is this is something i was messing around with so this is something you could also mess around with too if you really want to if you feel like you're drawing a lot of lands you can always play the hellhound which is a zero one and if you have a land into the battlefield it actually gets plus two plus one and essentially you only play one land a turn so you can get a two three uh, which is a pretty decent attacker if that's something i want to mess around with uh forever champions a very solid uh rare because it's a one man of one one first strike and haster and whenever attacks target at night you control gets plus one plus zero which essentially if you have multiples of these out you give them each plus one plus zero which still triggers before uh, triggers after the rainbow bombardment goes into effect i believe based on the stack i think how it auto stacks uh so essentially you swing in you still get the one ping of damage and then you get the plus one plus zero and then i think torbrain is also very solid because then it just makes rainbow bombardment that much better and torbrain is actually still below two so it would still trigger if even if you swung in with him and then our raven warman just hits our opponent's face that much harder i think torbrain is actually the one card you probably want to focus on possibly get it earlier just because it will help make your raven warman that much stronger you don't need four copies of you could probably get away with two and maybe cut back on some of uh some of like your top tier stuff here i wouldn't cut back on like the raven warmers but you can always run like three annexes and possibly drop uh casual's fury as well uh, because you know maybe you want to do that it's up to you uh you can always get rid of your spike field hazard if you feel like that's not working out for you either um but essentially you don't want to get too expensive on the top end because of the limited mana so that's uh, something that you can look at there uh with that being said this is kind of like a rainbow barman style mono red deck if you want to try it out like i said links are in the description for all the decks i do go over in this video and let's move on to the next one all right and the next deck up is another fun one that i've played around with in like the post you know m21 era like the 2021 standard style thing before uh zendikar rising came out and that is the is it uh which is a very interesting deck that essentially works around really two creatures in uh, the the meta as a whole right now just with like the budget friendly style and that is the 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 sprite dragon and the stormy entity and essentially these cards uh get bigger and bigger the more spells you play on a turn so uh the the sprite dragon gets a plus one plus one counter for each spell non-creature spell we cast so essentially you know maybe turn one maybe the first time you play on turn two it's a one one but essentially on turn three if you cast multiple spells this thing can become a three three if not bigger and the storming entity is a five mana three three flying prowess but it costs three less 
uh, if we play an instant or sorcery spell this turn. So essentially, if we play a shock or uh, you know a bounce spell or an opt, it's going to cost you two mana. And then when it enters the battlefield, we're going to scry two mana. Uh, and then essentially whenever we play a non-creature spell after that's on the battlefield, it will get plus one plus one until end of turn. So these are two cards that are really like um they're really gonna help push damage into our opponent's face. Uh there is Rimok Knight, which is another card which is kind of like a, a buff spell, which then would trigger um the you know the plus one plus one counter or the prowess on this. Uh you got the Bone Crusher Giant. This is something that you don't have to have in the deck. You can always run like, you know, more copies of some other burn spells if you want to. I know there's other burn spells in um and the thing if you want to draw like uh dragon fire or something like that you can always replace uh bone Crusher giants as you get more cards uh then we also have the hard fight emulator which is another cool card that i don't feel like it sees a lot of play but it's very interesting in this fact that it's a two mana two tour with prowess and we can always sacrifice and we can throw its it's power it's you know it deals damage to target uh creature or planeswalker to its prowess or its overall power so we can always throw it into something if we want to just kill off one of the big creatures uh, we also have riddle form which is a very good card because it's an enchantment that turns into a creature whenever we play an instance or sorcery spell and we can also tap through and can scry one which helps us set up the top of our library uh, we have deliberate which is another two mana instant uh spell that allows us to draw a card and also sc scry and then draw a card which is pretty good opt of course turn dismissal for bounds crash through for giving everything's trample if that's a necessity but also to draw a card for one mana shock for some spot removal spike field hazard also for some more spot removal and also some red mana in case we need it uh we got Celindy's vision which is a new card from zendikar Rising, which is pretty good in the sense that it allows us to look at the top six of our library we can reveal an instance of sorcery card among them put into our hand put the rest on the bottom of our library in any order which essentially helps us you know refill our hand as we're kind of like drawn down and like spells to like trigger the prowess and trigger like these pump effects like i said before we knights here as a pump card as well as a 3-1 attacker that can't block but the one mana pump spell is pretty solid add that to a, a you know sprite dragon or a storming entity on a possibly like final swing and then our land base is just you know we got eight islands we got five mountains four of the swift water cliffs and then like i there's also some modal lands in these cards in our deck so we can always fix that out like the vision and also the spike field hazard are two modal lands that will definitely round this out and then this is another one of those decks where the top end is really not too expensive sure the storming entity makes it seem like it's super expensive uh but essentially we're really trying to play it for the cheaper cost so essentially we're playing it for two so at most we need three mana and then in our sideboard in case you want to add this we have some other cards you can always go to seagate stormcaller seagate stormcaller there we go is a new card from zendikar rise and is a mythic um the one thing i would say here it's not really the for this the big kicker cost it painted for the seven mana but the two mana cost like the normal cost is pretty interesting because uh, when it enters the battlefield, our next instant or sorcery spell with the converted mana cost two or less this turn, when we cast it, we get a copy of it. Um, and then if it was kicked, we get uh, you copy that spell twice instead. This is additionally another kick, which essentially would be if we play this and then play like an opt or something, we essentially get a second opt. Um, and then which makes it even better, which then would trigger the prowess and then this ability twice, which essentially is pretty cool. We got the Magma and Chandler, which is a card that takes advantage of having instance of sorcery cards in our graveyard. Uh, it gets um, plus three, plus one if we have four or more instances of sorcery cards. And we discard a card, exile the top two cards of our library, choose one of them, you may play that card this turn, which is pretty cool ability. If we have some lands that we don't really need, we can always discard a land card, exile the top cards. Brazen Bar is another good card just because of the bounce effect, as well as it's a flash flyer for three mana. Shadow Skull Smash is another good card that you can always replace like a Spike Field Hazard because in the late game this is actually a pretty good removal spell because if we cast for six or more we deal it deals twice as x damage divided we choose among among those creatures instead as well as a land that we can always throw into play uh untapped for paying three life or we can just map a, a red land into play tapped and then we got the river guide and we got the pathway of course because it's a red blue modal land i would just replace the tap land if you want to go that route but overall this is a pretty solid deck and when it does go off it goes off pretty good um and it's essentially pretty aggressive as well because if our opponent's not very careful you can really hit them really hard in a turn and with like the limited like the like the the, more, the slower of the pace of the magic right now in the meta this is definitely a deck that can definitely take advantage of it just based on the speed and how hard it can hit and how quickly it can hit um so overall this is a fun deck it's very straightforward uh what it's trying to do just trying to play a lot of non-creature spells to kind of get the effects to pump up our creatures and just swing in for big damage but let's move on to the next deck and let's talk about that one
All right, the next deck up is a Boros deck that's focused around dogs, and it's a Boros dogs deck. There's not really too many things in the deck that are overall new that weren't already in the deck to begin with. I feel like this is a deck I definitely went over in M21. The only really additional card here is that we actually added the Oakum Hellhound, which is a card that has landfall that essentially gets plus two, plus two for every time a land enters the battlefield. Um, so it's a one mana, zero, one, but gets stronger the more lands, you know, every time we play a land. Um, and just overall, the goal of the deck here is just to play a bunch of dogs. Uh, you know, you got some humans in here, like the Season Hollowbait, just because it's a solid, like, blocker, allowing us to discard a card and make it destructible. Uh, we have the self of Savior to kind of also allow us to, you know, make things indestructible. We got the Alpine Houndmaster, which allows us to search our deck for, you know, two, the two dogs and add them to our hand to essentially refill our hand back up, allowing this to get possibly bigger if we can kind of attack in aggressively later in the game. And we got the Bolt Hound, of course, as one of these like big finisher things. If we tack it with like a very wide board, it gives everything plus one plus zero into end of turn and it has haste itself. Um, so that's pretty solid there. And overall, the deck the, is the aggressiveness of the deck is pretty interesting in what it's trying to do. You're just trying to play a lot of like small dogs, get very wide on your opponent. If your opponent's playing a much slower deck where they're playing maybe one or two creatures, you can definitely get very wide on them and actually swing very aggressively um you know we also got the ginger brute as well here just because it's a one mana haster which kind of helps it's not the, it's like the only thing that's not really a dog or a human uh we also have the fight as one as kind of like that pump spell slash giving things indestructible uh both non-humans and humans at the same time for one mana which is very solid which i feel like is a card that's definitely going to be popping up a lot more with the way the meta is um but overall the deck is pretty straightforward the pack leader is like the dog lord of the deck just because it's two mana two two that gives our other dogs plus one plus one and allows them to pretty much be indestructible when attacking or dealing it uh like when they attack in combat damage doesn't actually gets prevented on our creatures which essentially makes them this that much better so the only way they can really remove our dogs is by spot removal which essentially helps us be more aggressive when it comes to attacking but overall the deck's premise here is just play a lot of dogs uh, look our look through our deck for more dogs. Get a very big hound master. You know, have season halibut as just a thing that can just stand in the way of things. It's discarding cards to make it indestructible, and you know, keeping things on the board with selfless savior, and just playing a very big board. Um, the the deck land base is nine plains, nine mountains, four of the windscar crags, and we're not really playing any modal lands here. So the deck is very very uh, on the lower end of the mana, so with twenty two lands in the deck. But nothing like I said, nothing other than the bolt hound is actually more than two mana. So essentially, that is shouldn't be too much of a problem. And then you go to the sideboard, which is pretty straightforward. And this is actually one of those ways that you could actually kind of go one way or the other in what you're trying to do with the deck. So. There's there's one of two ways you can go. You have the one Noda version, which allows us to you know play Winota because it's a, a a red white card and actually adds some more human cards into the deck. Or it's just kind of uh, playing another version that kind of leans more into just like the very like you know mid rangey style Boro style deck. You know playing things like Giant Killer, maybe some Bone Crusher Giants to kind of allow yourself to kind of uh, build up a board presence, have some spot removal, and also play Embercleave for some swing big swing damage. And then the other thing too is you know get the needle pathway that you can play in either version but one note is another interesting thing just because there's a lot of dogs and there's ways to get more dogs on the battlefield and allowing you to trigger this ability multiple times and then adding in things like Hactos and Basari's Lieutenant, giving plus and plus one counters to our thing. And actually, in a weird way, I'm actually a big fan of this card in, 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 a, in a strange way, just because it's one of those things that it could be pretty interesting, just kind of pop one of these out on the battlefield, swing very aggressively. Um, and then all of a sudden have all these 1-1 tokens waiting to block your opponent's creatures to kind of like sit in case there's a, a possible, you know, uh, swing back if we get very aggressive. Uh, but like like I said, there's two different versions you can do with this deck. You can do the Winota version, or you could do the more just like let's build this up, let's get you know Ember Cleave on the, some of our things. And I feel like it's just one of those things that you depending on how you feel like playing, you can kind of build one way or the other. Uh, I would actually like to probably play more with the Ember Cleave style and be more aggressive in that way. But maybe in a future video we'll do we'll do that style of a deck, and then we'll also do a Winota version. We'll kind of figure out which one's better overall. All right, and the last deck up on the list that I actually am kind of interested on, uh, this is actually something I saw uh, listed somewhere else, and I kind of was inspired by it, uh, just in the way of it was a deck I enjoyed. It was very budget friendly back then in the previous standard, and that is an, uh, that is Azorius Flyers. If you're not really sure what the concept of the deck is, you're playing essentially like a blue white tempo style fly in deck where everything in the deck has fly in. And you're just trying to swing in over the air and then at some point you play rally the wings and with you know standard rotating we kind of lost rally the wings but we did actually kind of gain like a new card that's kind of like the new rally the wings though it is a sorcery it doesn't untap all our creatures and it does cost more mana so that is the one downfall to it um so overall you got to build the deck a little bit slower to kind of get us to that 
you know turn five that the card is and that, by the way if the card you're wondering is is mckindy's stampede which essentially gives all our creatures plus two plus two and done a turn and it can also be a land into play tapped uh because it's so expensive we're not running you know a lot of copies of it we're actually running only four two copies of it because we're also going to play heraldic banner allowing us to kind of like choose a devotion of a particular color in this sense because the deck is kind of more on the white side we actually would choose white just because a lot of things are multicolor and a lot of things are also white so we essentially want to give our white creatures more power and toughness but we do also have you know some blue creatures in the deck that in the early game depending on how it is we can always play blue uh it's one of those things that you can either do either way we're also only running two of these so you can actually do one blue and one white but it and essentially we want to lean one way or the other you want to you know balance it in between just because you want to be very aggressive depend i would say just all depending on what color you really feel like you're drawing uh you know, we got things like fairy guide mother which has a pump ability but yet again it's a pump at a sorcery speed for two mana it gives things plus two plus one and flying but all our things have flying anyway so it's not a big deal we have the cut sale cleric which is a very interesting card in the late game um in the sense that it can tap down two things our opponent has so if they have flying blockers we can tap down their flying blockers uh if it was kicked so that's something we can do in the late game but it's essentially it's a one 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 it's a one one for one flyer uh bubble snare is an interesting card here can also tap down our opponent's creatures uh it it, it, essentially we can also play for one mana which if they decide to tap their creature uh, it then stays tapped uh but you can kick it for four mana and automatically and force them to tap their creature and also keep it tapped that way uh we got the merfolk wind robber just for the one mana one one -er. uh if our opponent decides to throw things in their graveyard to try to you know combat this uh, essentially uh, if they get to eight or more we can actually sacrifice this and actually draw a card so this is like unfortunately we kind of lost our way to kind of draw cards with um with the sailor uh, so this is like our next best thing. It's not as great, but in the late game, you know, this is something we can always throw away if our opponent's graveyard starts stacking up. Uh, we got Sejuri's Shelter, which is a way to give our things protection from a particular color, as well as the Modal Land. We also have, uh, you know, Jawari's Disruption, which is a counter spell and six girl pays one. So in the early game, this is very disruptive on our opponent, Lofty Denial, because we're trying to play Flyers, uh, which is a very strong counter. Uh, essentially, you know, make our opponent counter target spell and six girl pays one, but if we control a creature flying, it's now four. Uh, Skycat Sovereign is the one rare, like the one rare in the deck. We got four copies of. It gets plus one, plus one for each creature we're flying. And uh, if we get four or more mana, we can start pumping out one, one cat bird tokens, which essentially grows the Skycat Sovereign because it gets plus one, plus one for each other creature we control or flying, so it gets bigger. We got Staggering Insight to kind of make our flyers uh, a little bit more aggressive and a little more tempo friendly in the sense that it gives it plus one, plus one. It gives it lifelink. And whenever this creature does damage common damage to a player we draw a card so you throw on something like a sky cat sovereign which is essentially going to get bigger and bigger uh giving it lifelink and allowing us to draw a card uh so that's pretty good there we got watcher of the spheres which is a new card from n21 that makes our flyers cost one less to play i mean we really don't have any super expensive flyers i mean the only thing we really have is jubilee and skybounder but it's one of those abilities but the other ability that's actually very strong with it is that whenever a creature we control enters the battlefield under creature we control flying enters the battlefield under control it gets plus one plus one until end of turn so essentially if we play multiple plus, uh one ones uh with flying or one mana one 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 flyers or whatever this thing's gonna get bigger and bigger so we can get very aggressive and also play some you know one with chump blockers or just also just build up a board for later turns uh which is pretty good we got the sky matter like i said before it's a three mana two two but it makes our creatures actually make our opponents uh removal spells cost more uh if our spells our opponents cast that target this creature cost two more to cast uh essentially giving that to all our flyers which kind of like makes our stronger our flyers a little bit a little bit more pain in the butt to kind of get rid of and like i said the deck is rounded out by heraldic banner as one way to kind of pump our creatures to make them a little bit more aggressive or the stampede if we kind of get to turn five and just have one big swing with the plus two plus two like i said the only downfall is at sorcery speed so our opponent's gonna see it happening um but overall it's a pretty fun budget friendly deck uh and then the land base is seven and seven and four so that's 18 there and we have the modal cards here to kind of round out the mana overall and then in the sideboard we have a couple of cards that you can add to the deck uh essentially all i really would say is you probably play brazen borrowers just because it's a better you know thing i would just replace maybe the the jubilee and skybounder uh, just because it's a bounce effect and it also a three mana three one flyer and then the ball is another interesting card here i don't think we actually i think we may depending on what I, if i'm looking at the deck i haven't really looked at it we have cleric we have rogue uh we have angel wizard and then i'm trying to see if we have warrior anywhere i don't think we have warrior so that's the only thing we're, we're missing but essentially limvala if you don't know um 
it's a 3-3 flyer for 3 mana. And the real key here on Limbala is that we can actually sacrifice her and we can give uh we can choose either hexproof or indestructible, increases we control gain that ability until end of turn. So essentially, if our opponent's trying to do any sort of spot removals and or any board wipes, we can choose depending on what the tar that the spell is, we can actually sacrifice her in response and kind of give us give it one way or the other. So essentially kind of you know helping us you know be very aggressive at the same time. Like I said, we don't really have any uh, warriors in the deck, so we won't get the full the party effect. Uh, but it'd be very interesting if we if there's any flying warriors that are blue or white. I, I actually should do some research and see. But overall, these are some cards you can look into building. Uh, you know, either or. I would say the Brazen Borrower is something that you know you may want. Um, I'm trying to think of the top of my head. I, is there a blue white land that I didn't that I didn't add? Uh, did I forget the pathway? Uh. I did not. Okay. There's no blue white pathway. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't forgetting the pathway for you guys. But I mean, overall, the deck is pretty good. You can also add in the land that, you know, you come, put, comes in about the temple, it comes in about from the scry for any of these budget decks uh, as you get them. But I actually like the game life gain ones instead. I think it kind of helps you kind of, you know, get that one additional life that could matter in the later game, especially on being on the budget. Essentially, it also depends on if you're playing things that are more aggressive. It's always good to have that one additional life because you never know when it comes in handy. Um, but temples are always good too if you feel like you're just having issues trying to figure out, find the cards you're looking for. Uh, but guys, let me know what one of these decks is kind of one, one of your favorites or something you're very interested in looking to build. Uh, down in the comments below, if there's anything you guys want me to kind of build towards, I will be doing gameplay videos, of course, on all each of these separately on the channel. So you'll probably see them come out. Uh, sporadically over the next week or so I kind of they'll probably be in my next videos I kind of produce um, I am also working on some of my older decks that were kind of from pre-rotation I'm trying to see if I can upgrade those as well uh, these decks aren't as budget friendly some of them are a little bit more expensive and what rares and things like that so as I kind of tweak those I'll probably make videos on that uh, if you like the video hit that like button I do appreciate it if you want to post more videos hit that subscribe button and I will catch you in the next video